Praise the Lord once again, Faith Apostolic Church. Welcome to Sunday night service. Uh, I thank God that the Lord has brought us this far. God is good to us. He has been abundantly merciful and has blessed us. And I know that each of you are praying and, and trusting the Lord right now. And that's what we've got to continue to do as we are continuing in this social distancing process. And I'm looking forward to the day when we get to come back to church together. If you have your Bibles and would, turn with me to the book of Psalms, chapter 27. For our Sunday evening service tonight, there's something that, that's on my heart. And if you would stay with me for a few moments, I believe that, that God, will, uh, God will speak to us tonight. Uh, in Psalms, chapter 27, beginning at verse number 1, uh, the psalmist David is writing, and he says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear Though war should arise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, and have mercy also upon me, and answer me. When thou saidest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsook me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies. For false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. Verse 13 and 14 says, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. For a few moments tonight, I'm going to minister on this subject title, The Common denominator the common denominator let's pray father we come to you and give you thanks for your word i thank you for strength and power god your word O oh lord is truly a lamp to our feet it is a light unto our path i pray god that you would use your word right now tonight god to touch the hearts of your people i pray god that you would use this pastor lord and anoint these lips of clay to minister to your people, God, and I pray, Lord, your presence and your anointing feel, Lord, feel this message in Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. I would like to use three separate and distinct events in the Bible. Now, there's many, many others that, that I could use, and, and I understand that you'll probably even uh, remember some as well, but I'm going to try to limit my Self to these three biblical events that took place. The first event took place in 1 Kings chapter 17, a, a story that is told many, many times about the prophet Elijah. Uh, he had issued the words, and uh, of course, a famine was coming upon the land. A famine is going to last about three and a half years, a famine that is struck. That place and the Bible focuses in on the prophet Elijah and, and the story unfolds concerning a widow woman. So 
there is this little widow woman that is dwelling in the, in the land of, of Zarephath. And uh, her and her son, all that she has left is a handful of meal. I'm not going to go through the entire story, but the Bible tells us that there's just a, a little bit of meal in a barrel and a little bit of oil in a cruise. And the situation has come to the point that the mother's only plan of action that she feels that is left for her to pursue is the, the action for her to, to take what is left, to take the meal that is left, the little cruise of oil that is left, and to make two cakes out of it. And she's going to make one for herself and one for her son. Her plan is uh, that she's going to eat of that and then they are going to die. She is out of ideas. She is out of hope. And the reality of the moment has brought to life uh, the certain reality and calls for her to come to the conclusion that I will prepare what I have left. We're going to eat of it and we are going to die. This woman is no doubt at the end of her Rope, And I can only imagine how desperate this mother was, how desperate she was and what she had must have tried to do and tried to go through to gain food and to get food for her son. But I can't just imagine uh, what kind of place she would be at in her mind in order for her to succumb to the idea that hope is lost. And this is the end for me and my son. Another story that I want to bring in is found in 2 Kings chapter 4. The prophet Elisha is the man of God upon the scene. And there's a woman that, uh, whose husband has died and the creditors has come to, to receive payment for the debt that she owes. That devastation has come upon this widow woman's house and the Bible does not declare what caused her husband's death, only it does declare that her husband is dead and that he was a man that feared God. But the stark reality is that bills are piling up and the debt has uh, abruptly uh, come upon her and she has this understanding that, that there is nothing else for her to do. Most likely she had been given the notices to pay her debt that, that her husband had, had acquired and she had been warned, no doubt, the warning notices from her creditor and I'm sure that this inflicted fear upon her and this lady evidently had no means to repay and would no doubt do anything within her power to save her sons but like any other mother in this same situation, I'm sure that she hoped and she prayed and she sought for the day when things would turn around and, and things would start looking up again and she could settle her debt. But the day finally did come. The day dawned when the creditors came to her doorstep and they come to collect upon the debt that was owed. And, and if she was able to make ample provision, ample payment, then the horrific events that was about to take place is not going to happen. But seeing that there is nothing left of worth, she has nothing else to give, they determined, they determined that in order for her debt to be paid, they are going to take her two sons and use them as bondmen, as slaves, until that debt that she owes is paid. And crying out in desperation to the man of God for help, she would ask Elisha. She would ask Elisha for help, and Elisha, the man of God, would speak to her, and he would simply say, What hath thou in thine house? What do you have in her house? And her fear filled as her heart is breaking and, and her response is no doubt a fear filled response. And she cries out, the handmaid hath not anything in the house save a pot of oil. This woman was at the end of her rope and it appeared that there was no other way out of the mess that she is in. The third story that I want to bring in 
to this message is found in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, Judah, the people of God, the people of Judah is surrounded by many adversaries. And there is no way of escape. They had come to the end of their road. Kind of seems like that is common in all three of these stories. They have come to the end of their road. Jehoshaphat proclaims in verse number 12 in his prayer unto God, a desperation cry to the Lord. Jehoshaphat says, O oh, our God, in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 12, he says, O oh, our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon the Jehoshaphat is crying out, this, this uh, company that is surrounding us, we are, we're at our wits end, we, we don't even have any idea, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are upon you, Lord. Verse 13 says, And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. I have chosen these three stories from the history of God's people, but there are, like I said, many, many others that would testify to the common prayer that is discovered in all of these, the common denominator that, that brings all of these stories together. There is something that, that each and every one of these Bible stories has in common, and that is the very thing that I felt like speaking to us for this tonight. God wants us, and I believe God wants me to make this emphatically clear to each and every one that is listening for the day and hour that we are living in. Let this be said loud and let it be said clear. The common denominator in these stories and in the story of your life tonight is this fact, that God always moves on time. God always moves on time. When she was at the bottom of her barrel, 1 Kings chapter 17, the Bible says that Elisha said unto her in verse 13, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy sons. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord send rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and her and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord which he spake by Elijah. When the creditors came knocking upon that widow woman's house to take her two sons, the widow woman, she confessed that she did not have anything left in the house save a pot of oil. But Elisha says to her in 2 Kings 4 and 3, he tells her, Go borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all those vessels, and shalt, thou shalt set aside that which is full. Verse 5 says, So when she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her, she poured out. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her sons, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil, and pay thy debt, and live thou and thy children of the rest. Now let me take you to the third story. Jehoshaphat and the people of God, they are surrounded by the adversary. The enemy is breathing down their neck. 
back. He is there for one reason and one reason only, and that is to destroy them. They stood there for before the Lord. The Bible tells us that they stood there with their little ones, with their wives, and with their children. In verse number 12 of 2 Chronicles 20, the prayer is stated, O oh, our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company. They're declaring that they can't do it in themselves. They realize that they do not have the strength that they do not have the might uh, uh, against that company that has come up against them. And neither know we what to do, but our eyes uh, are upon thee. It is in that moment of hopelessness, in that moment of helplessness, uh, that God uh, Almighty makes his entrance. Uh, and the Bible says in verse number 14, then upon Jehazel, the son of Zechariah, and then it gives his link. And it declares and says, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. In the midst of all of this turmoil and all this chaos, the Spirit of the Lord came upon the Jehazel. And the Bible declares, he said... Hearken ye, all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou, King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but Gods. The Bible declares the story as it begins to unfold. The Bible tells us in verse number 20 that they rose up early. They went forth into the wilderness of Tico A. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat, he stood up and he said, Hear me, O Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God. So shall ye be established. Believe his prophets. So shall ye prosper. And when he consulted with the people and he appointed singers unto the Lord that should praise the Lord in the beauty of holiness. And, and as they went out before the army and to say praise the Lord for his mercy endured forever. And when they began, verse number 22 says, and when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. The Bible tells us that the children of Ammon and Moab, they stood up against the children of the inhabitants of Seir, and, and they began to slay one another, and they began to make an end of one another, and, and everyone helped to destroy each other. The enemy began to destroying itself against the children of God. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, verse number 24, they looked into the multitude and behold, there were dead bodies fallen to the earth and none escaped. And when Jehoshaphat and the people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels which they stripped off from them more than they could carry away. And they were three days, three days in gathering of the spoil. It was so much. And on the fourth day, they assembled themselves in the valley of Barakah, for there they blessed the Lord. Therefore, the name of the same place was called the valley of Barakah unto this day. That word Barakah means blessing. They turned their valley into a blessing by remaining focused on the fact of understanding that God always moves on time. Their situation hadn't changed, but they can't begin to sing. Their circumstances hadn't changed, but they began to praise the Lord. And when they began to praise God, and when they began to worship God, the Bible tells us that God moved in on the scene. God always moves on time, church. I come to preach to
to somebody tonight for a few moments in this place. I know that we can share stories. You've got your stories and there are stories that we can compile together that would testify. We can hear the testimony after testimony that would back up what I am saying. It would justify the words that I am speaking tonight. But the Lord wants me to declare it as the preacher in your hearing one more time. The same God that has brought us this far is the same God that has proven himself strong in our behalf. And the fact remains that this God that has moved for us before will move for us again because our God moves on time. Always on time. The psalmist David he wrote in the Psalms that I, I opened up in our reading, Psalms chapter 27. The psalmist David evidently had been going through a struggle. He had been going through some trial himself, but he begins to encourage himself in the Lord. He makes this statement as he opens up this song. He says, the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. Notice that there's a period at the end of that sentence. As he said, in this will I be confident. What are you being confident in, David? He has been confident in what he just said in verse number one, that the Lord is my light, that the Lord is my salvation, that the Lord is the strength of my life. And then he says, in one thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord to inquire in his temple for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me he shall set me up upon a rock David confessed and he, he gave this advice and he said in verse number 13 he said I had fainted unless I I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. If I had just paid attention to what David had said, if I had just paid attention to what was going on around me, if I just kept focusing on the bad news, if I just kept focusing upon the enemy, I would have fainted. I would have fell by the wayside. I would have succumbed to fear. I would have succumbed to depression. I would have just hid away and, and, and tried to hide myself and declared that it is over. But I began to believe. He said I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I'm here to tell you right now God's still good. God's still strong. God's still mighty. God's still providing. He's still making a way where it seems like there is no way. God is still God. And can I declare to the church He he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will not fail. He will remain the same. And He always moves. He always moves for His people. And David would say, He would give us the advice in verse 14. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Yes, the nights are sometimes long. The hills, they are often very hard to climb. The mountains that are standing in front of us, it seems like sometimes there is no end. As we look upon them in the valleys that we're going through, it seems like there is no end in sight. The barrel 
the barrel of meal it may be just about empty and that cruise of oil it may seem like there's just not anything left as that woman said I don't have anything save a pot of oil a little oil in a cruise it may be that the enemy is surrounding you has you encompassed about on every side and it appears that there is no escape but can I declare to you it is not over until God says that it's over. I will declare again what David said. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Let me tell you church, he is my buckler. He is my sword. He is my shield. He is our hope. He is our source of strength. He is our rock in a weary land. He is our shade. He is our hiding place. He is our strong tower. He is the mighty God. He is the lily of the valley. He is the rose of Sharon. He's the bright and the morning star. He is my God. My God in whom I will trust. My God in whom I have believed. And I declare as the testimonies throughout this word and the centuries of time have led us to this day. God, the God that we serve, always, always the common denominator of our life, child of God, is that God always moves on time. Somebody ought to shout out the name of Jesus. Somebody ought to cry out the name of Jesus right now because He is my hope. He is our source of strength. He always moves on time. He's never too early, never too late, child of God, but I can promise you this. God God will not fail His people. God will not fail His people. He is going to be God throughout time until there is no more time. And then throughout the portals of glory He shall remain God. That one God that sits upon the throne of heaven. He shall be and even as He is today declared King of kings and Lord of lords. Praise God He moves on on time. I'm going to close with these words from the Apostle Paul as he gives instruction to the church in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. The Apostle Paul he says in verse number 15 I'm going to begin. It says for all things are for your sakes that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God for which cause we faint not but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen, they are eternal. We got to get our focus off the things that we're seeing and get our focus on the things that are eternal because that's why we're living this way. That's why we're walking this walk and that's what our hope is in. If, it, if our hope was in this life only, we would be among all men most miserable. But our hope is beyond this life. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul said in Galatians chapter 6, he said, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. It's not over, child of God. This is not the end. God is on our side. He will move for His people. You can ask Joshua, you can ask Abraham, you can ask Daniel, you can ask the Apostle Peter, the Apostle Paul. We can name a multitude of names throughout the Word of God and testimonies of, uh, of people in our history. You can ask them that question and they will declare the same. God has always moved on time for His people. So child of God, do not succumb to fear. Do not succumb to the oppression 
divisiveness uh, of the enemy and adversary that is trying to weigh down. I know that there is a constant pressure of what is going on in our world today. It's trying to weigh on our mind. It's trying to tear at our faith. But encourage yourself. Be of good courage. Do not be afraid because God's still on the throne. The Lord is still the King of glory. His name is Jesus. Call on that name. You can call on Him and He will hear. He will answer. I am declaring to us right now God is sending His help. God is sending His purpose. And God will declare unto us that God is going to get glory in this situation. I believe it through the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to hear testimonies of the power and glory of God that has worked in this. So stay strong, child of God. Trust in the Lord. He's moving. God is moving. Sometimes it's like Job. He's on the left hand where I cannot behold him. You may feel that right now that he's on the left hand. That you're wondering, God, where are you at? I'm telling you, God is at work. God is moving. He's going to move all on time because he always moves on time. Why don't you just lift your hands right now and let's pray. God in heaven, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I earnestly seek your face right now. I pray for those that's under the sound of my voice. And it's even as David would write, as he would write, in Scripture, Lord, He said in one place, what time I am afraid, I will trust in Thee. I pray right now, God, for those that are out there, God, that even has fear upon them and, and they're concerned. They're concerned about their families. They feel like situations are coming. There are things that's breathing down their neck. There's decisions that they feel has got to be made and it seems like there's no way out. It seems like there's no hope and that they're at the end of their road. I pray, God, that you would have let this word remind them, Lord, that you're a present help in the time of trouble. Remind them, Almighty God, that you have always moved for them in the past on time and that you will continue to move for them on time every time. Father, I pray it in the name of Jesus Christ. Strengthen your people. Let the anointing of God go in their life and destroy the yokes of fear and destroy the yokes, oh God, of oppressiveness. I I pray raise up that spirit of peace and love, joy and sound mindedness, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen, church. Uh, Wednesday night Bible study. I'm looking forward to it. Should the Lord tarry. Amen. But one thing I want to encourage you with. I want to encourage you with this and declare one more thing. God is coming soon. Make sure you are ready to meet Him. For that moment could happen anytime. Be ready to meet the Lord in Jesus' name, church.